Hello and welcome back. This is Ghost Dimension Flying Solo. Coming up on Ghost Dimension. This is real. This stuff, you just can't make it up. I think that was his fault. I think he's just kicked me. No! No! Camera's on edge, but something's gonna happen. It's one haunted location. Jesus, that wasn't me. Ghost Dimension. Let's take a look at what happened last time. Is there somebody here? Can you walk close to me into my uh, into my body if you like? Come and take over me. Make me feel like the me lady that was here felt. Hello? Whoa. Did you hear that? I swear, I swear to God. I don't feel good here. I swear to God, I heard a noise. Okay. You can't use that? Join us as we dig deep into this museum and try to unearth souls from an industry long dead, but not forgotten. Let's hear from our psychic medium in Oklahoma, Para. Hello, I'm Para. I'm a medium from Oklahoma, and Sean sent me six photographs of the Astley Green Colliery Museum. Uh, the first thing I picked up right away is what I would call as a trapped emotion or trapped emotions. This place has a sadness hanging over it. It it affected people that are still living. It affected people that have long passed. There's a, like a cloud of sadness that hangs over this place. Um, one man did step forward to me. He says his name is James and he keeps checking his pocket watch. Um, he told me it was a gift from his grandfather and he said, John, is John okay? He also asked me, um, where are the others? And I told him I wasn't sure. He also told me that he feels responsible for them. And however, this man died was intense. I could feel my skin prickling hot with heat and I could hear this roar in my ears. It was so loud and I started gasping for breath and I had to cut it off by then. I had to quit talking to him because the pain was very, very intense. Um, I also heard a machine kicking on and running for a period of time. Um, the spirit that's turning that on, I, I believe, is a residual spirit um, because they wouldn't come talk to me. And the machine kicking on doesn't happen all the time. It's only every once in a while. I also could hear clanking of metal and gravelly footsteps. Um, I couldn't tell you what the metal clanking was. I could just hear it. It was loud. It was really loud. I also could hear uh, a train whistle and it was fairly loud so I'm assuming that there's train tracks really close to this area. I've never been there so I don't know. <laughs> there's also a spirit of a woman that roams around I guess the yard is what I would call it and she is not connected to this museum in particular. But what I do believe is she laid across the train tracks to let the train kill her. That's what I've got the feeling that she's uh, more of a residual spirit because when I tried to talk to her, she just kept going on with her continual pace, I guess. <laughs> 
and she also was crying and she was talking to herself so I kind of wondered if she was suffering from some sort of mental illness um, other than that that's all I got from the museum Para had given some great information which matched the history of the museum now I speak to Lee to hear what he sensed before I continue the investigation Lee you were drawn into this room and this is where the engine room, and I have to point out before we start, this is a fantastic engine. It's massive, fantastic piece of machinery. Now this is the biggest engine in Europe and believed to be potentially one of the biggest in the world. Are you, it is good, isn't it? Are you feeling anything that you were drawn here for? Has any more come to you? Yeah, this is more residual. Um, I feel like panic here in this area, like this area would have been significant to the fire. It's like there's people running from this area. I get the residual of people running from this area to the pit yep. where the explosion was. Um, it's just a feel of sheer panic and... So the people when they were down in the pit, they ran from outside and they came in here? Yeah, it feels like this room um, would have been used um, at some point as like kind of like a makeshift hospital, you know, as they were pulling people out. Oh, okay. it's, like, yeah, yeah. it's like this was used as some kind of base room. Yeah. Is that energy that you're feeling then, is that residual energy? Definitely, yeah. So that's just replayed, so that's in, built into the fabric of yep. this building. Yeah. So, would that energy now, is it still replaying to this day? Are they still... It still replays to me over and over and over. I can just yep. uh, get the image of this panic, and it's like, I want to go down. Yeah. You know, and try and get these people out, and I can see, like, the smoke, and also, there was a significance to a fireman as well who lost All his right, life, okay. who was trying to actually save the people. So in here as well, because this room is so echoey, it's very echoey because the acoustics are fantastic, if anything did happen, you'd guarantee to hear Definitely. What, what it was. Yeah. yeah. And I think that this is going to be a fantastic room to investigate with some of the more um, scientific equipment that we've got where we can involve some of these stuff and bring in some, maybe some electrical stuff and yeah. send us some energies of some ions with some static. Do you think that may increase the energy? Definitely, yeah. I think well, it's definitely worth a shot in, in this out, area. Yeah. Maybe out of the fabric and just to replay, maybe we can hear something. Definitely, yeah. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to get started. I think it's going to be a fantastic investigation. And right now, I think I'm going to get started. Yeah? Good luck. Excellent. Come on, let's go. Paul, I can't believe the level of activity at Astley Green tonight. So far, so good. Mm. It's been, so far, like a bit of a roller coaster yeah. of a journey. Yeah. With the investigations that we've done, you know, with Jane, yourself, and me, they've all so far provided paranormal evidence. Yeah, certainly appears to have. I mean, it's like you say with the roller coaster thing, it's been slow to build. But once we, we sort of coax them out, we've had a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And it's early, you know, once they get to trust us, who knows what else is going to happen. Well, I think it's because when we have done this investigation here, it's not been done to death by paranormal groups, mm. you know, and sometimes a lot of visitors can bore spirits because, you know, just like people, they get bored and yeah. they want to move on and do something different or be entertained a different way. Yeah. And I think when we get a location like this, it makes it such a height of activity yeah. and a hive. Yeah, well the thing is, I mean, they're not used to having interaction, are they? You know, they, they, if there's more than one, they've probably got their own little clan and they stick together yeah. the way that we would because we can't see them. But then we come in more aware that they're here and we start to talk to them. They're not used to it. Yeah, and so then they want to play with the equipment that we bring yeah. because they've never seen it before. Exactly. So it's like, what's that piece of equipment there on the side? What's this over here? Yeah. Let me go over. Oh, it made a noise. Oh, yeah. it flashed. Yeah. And our technology is so much more advanced than when they were here. They're going to be wary of it. Especially you know? being miners. Uh, yeah. You know, they wouldn't have seen much technology, no. a lot of manual labour. Yeah. And so when we're bringing the high-tech gasmos and gadgets, gadgets here, mm -hmm then they're, of course, going to be intrigued. Of course they are, and that seems to be the case. They are coming forward, they are starting to do as we're asking once we've explained what it does. Yeah. And we're getting the things that are, we're after. They, they are reacting to, to stuff, and it's great. There's so much more, and it, it's nice that I think that we're reaching out because there's probably stories that haven't been told. People's lives would have been cut very short because of accidents or whatever. Um, and I think it's nice that 
because we're aware of them, we can extend a hand to try and give them a little bit of closure and accept, you know, and acknowledge that they're still here. Well, because there's so much of this place ball to investigate, I think it would be an injustice for us not to get back out there mm -hmm. and investigate. So you know what? Let's do it, Paul. Come on. To you, sir. Okay, now I've come into the main museum for this um, mining area, for this location, and I'm feeling excited also a bit. Whoa, okay. Well, I didn't expect that. That came from in here. And as you can see, this is all static. This was um, used to get the lamps. It was a lamp station. So this is where the miners, this is a recreation of it, or maybe they actually used it, but this is where the lamps would have been uh, collected. So still at Astley Green Colliery in a different room, actually on a, the first floor of another building. I don't know if they've got names, I haven't been given the names of what the buildings are, but uh, you can see there's some mock-ups here. This actually looks like the stairs of the building I've just come into. So, I could take you for a tour around it on the inside. And that's the, uh, what's out there. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> so it's quite uh, quite a big room. Looks like it's a staff room of some sort. But what I have just been told about this particular room um, is that on this floor is where they brought the bodies from the people that uh, I presume had the, the accident in 1939. So. Uh, there's going to be a feel. It feels. I mean, this is probably the hottest room I've been in tonight. It is it is unbearable. This this is just so hot. And I'll take you around here before I start calling out. I've put a couple of REM pods on the floor. So Jesus Christ, you scared the life out of me. Look, you know, if one thing's not it's not the other, is it? There's a REM there. So if anything comes near that REM, it'll uh, go off. Hopefully. And there's a rem on this uh, wheelchair. To me, this feels like the most active part of this building. So I thought if I put the rems there, maybe something will communicate. So and inside here, I'll show you, is a like a mine area. It's a recreation of a mine. Now I'm going to call out, see if I can get anything into it. Interact with me. Okay, is anybody here that wants to communicate with me? I know Lee sent some um, spirits before and earlier on to his two people. Are you here? Are you able to give me a sign you're here? Can you use your voice or come towards one of my devices and set them off? Whoa, okay. Again, another um, light anomaly there. I just saw a light anom anomaly on the uh, camera and it went to what the hell was that? It went towards the red, but then over here, I heard like a tap or something was thrown. Place is empty. I'm going to tap this bell, this clocking in machine. I need you to respond. And do it back. Are you able to do that for me? Apparently, stuff does happen. It would be nice if we experience it. And if we do, go with me. Another room in here. Oh, this is an office. And a filing cabinet. Now, a filing cabinet is relevant, I think. I think somebody said that where there's a filing cabinet, this room is where the bodies were, were laid out. 
I think I think that's what uh, what the story is. So we'll see. Um, all I've brought in here is the ovulus um, because if there is anything that's happened then perhaps we can get it through the ovulus. So we're in dictionary mode straight away as always. It's like an old uh, punch clock for your card so that you clock in when you get into work. Is there anybody in here? Is there anybody that lost their lives in the mine? It was weird, you know, I came in here um, before I started the camera and waffling. I didn't hear anything. But now I can hear this clock ticking. Didn't hear it before. Girl. Girl. Now, there has been a girl spotted here. Uh, I think Darren was telling us before that there's a, a, a girl that's um, been seen lurking about somewhere. I think. Are you here with me now, little girl? Maybe if I walk away from it, it'll make a noise. Okay, back here with the horse. It feels a bit weird now. Now it's getting later in the investigation. I feel that maybe whatever was negative in the machine room that Lee was sensing and the staff have picked up, I feel it may have followed me over here. Can you use your voice if you're here? You're throwing things at me. No way, no way, no way. That was through here. That was through here. Hello? I swear I heard something there. I'm gonna come into the lamping area where all the lamps are. Can you touch this person on the table and make him move? Or ring the phone on the desk. Seems to have gone a slight bit quiet. Every time I come round this corner, she she is freaking me out. What the hell was that? That was in the lamping room. I just left the lamping room. That sounded like this was rattling. I'm going to see if uh, anything gets captured from that in Mommy. Mommy. Okay. Now, let's put this together. Girl, light, mommy. So if we've got a little girl here that <coughs> needs to be with her mommy, needs to go to the light. Now, I know people are going to be saying you make anything up from the ovulus and you could but girl and mummy that's a little bit hard to refute in my opinion and then light yeah maybe I am clutching but supposing there is somebody here that needs some help. Can you tell me your name? And now we've got demon. Light, dark, demon. Make that rattle again on my camp. What the hell was that?
that was poltergeist or whatever that was, that was poltergeist. Well, I'm going to go into this room here. I'm going to point my camera so I can see. And I'm going to even confine myself that bit more. Okay. Right. I'm here. You've got me on my own. And it's pitch black. Now's your chance to do something near me. Stop throwing things at me and attack me now. Listen, listen. Do that again if that was you. Footstep or something sounded like a footstep. I'm just going to go back into this room now. again. This is the room with the filing cabinet where supposedly this is where the bodies were laid out. Is there anybody here? Anybody that passed in a tragic mine accident? No! No! There was a noise in here, but an even bigger noise out here. This lamping room. And behind me again. What the hell? I can't keep up with this. This is one area to the next, too. This is one haunted location. What the hell is this room? This is the woodwork area that Darren does all his woodwork in. If you're in, if that noise was in here, do it again. There's some stairs up there. No way. I, I can't believe this. This is weird because I don't ever get this level of activity ever. I'm walking from room to room trying to find what the source is and it's just not there. I heard that and we would have caught that. If you're so powerful, spirit, why can't you set one of my meters off? Why do you always have to throw stuff at me? That's pretty cool. Oh, Jesus. I'm just pointing towards the fireplace. I've just seen a, like a ball of light just at that fireplace. Let's go and have a look. It's just like a flash of light, but I don't think there's anything here. Sunrise. Well, it wasn't that bright. What about sunrise? I really need for you to try and talk to me as best as you can. If it's you that's using this so far, you've done really well. Can you give me a little bit more? So I see a ball of light there, and then I get the word sunrise, which I'm not going to try and connect at all because it wasn't as bright as the sunrise. So I an eerie feeling in here. So, um, so it's a bit sad. And it, it's, it's as it always is, it's a little hard to explain, but it feels, um, it feels like death. It just feels like there's a, a, a feeling of death and anticipation, anticipation. OK, 
Can you touch one of these objects in here? Are you been, have you been throwing coal at me? Is that what it is? I bet this entity thinks it's funny. I don't feel... Well, yeah, do you know, as I'm talking to you, I don't feel safe going back in here. Sorry. Every time I look, I see this dark shadow. And it's this woman. And there was a noise. There was a noise that came from over there then. This is, see, you can see this. This is real. This stuff, you just can't make it up. This, look. This is just weird. No one around, and the noises are coming. But when you point the camera, they're happening, but you can't physically see them happening. Let's stand still. Let's not stand still. Let's go in here and stand still. Oh, shit, she scared me again. Right, I'm in here. In the museum. On my own. I can hear you setting all the stuff around me. Moving it, banging it, whatever it is you're doing. I can't see it. But I can hear it. Set one of my own meters off. Walk towards one of my meters and set it off. It's gone quiet. It's gone eerily quiet. No way. I don't know where this is. I saw something and I'm sorry for jumping. I'm just confused. It's like the noises come from everywhere and I try and find them and I can't locate them. Which is just weird. I'm just drawn back into this room again. I'm just going to see if there's anything in here that's moved. Again. Ow. My eyes. Again, nothing's moved. Look, right? I've left the door open. Close the door. No way. That's weird. A noise over there. And something rattled over here at the same time. Please do that again if that was you. Yeah, I feel a little bit kind of on edge, like, you know, something's going to happen. Which, that is what we want. Okay, let's have a look. Soldiers. Soldiers. Hard to connect the dots with some of this stuff. Especially when you get something like apple. Soldiers and apple. Mm. Had it been teacher and apple, but soldier, soldiers and apple. Hard to connect the dots to that one. Are the soldiers here? Did you come back from the Second World War and work down in the mines? Is that what happened? Or were you working down there? And well, when the Second World War started, that's what you did. You signed up to become a soldier. Or was it conscription? Were you drafted in? Okay. Let's see. This is the thing about spirits. and There was a medium that I spoke to recently that said... You'll never capture them normally, unless it's a mistake with your actual eyes. 
but you'll always capture them at the corner of your eye, you'll just miss it. And it's real, because you know why it's real? It's because the spirit does not want to be seen. Why should they be seen? Maybe they can't. No way. And now I'm gonna show you something. On here, there's a letterbox. You can see that, yeah? That rattled and the letterbox went. There's no letters. This is Poltergeistal. This is Poltergeistal. What? It's tapping back. Do it again. There's a washroom here. I thought it was a washroom. It's a door. Okay, it's any spirits that are trying to scare the life out of me. You're doing a good job. But you're not using my meters. You're trying to throw stuff at me. You're attacking me. That's what I see it as. It's a form of an attack. Which I, you know, I don't mind him asking for it. But please, show yourself on this camera or light one of my meters up and walk towards them. The activity was definitely increasing and with so many areas to cover, I decided to move to the engine room while Paul continued where I left off in the museum. So I'm going to go into this big, big engine room. I've already set up some uh, ramp pods in here. I've also got a proximity sensor attached to the engine. Now, if anything, um, I can attack, uh, sorry, touch the engine. That will be truly amazing. Let me get this door closed. How is it shut? Whoa, that's shut with some force. Okay, I'll show you. I've got a rem down there. So if that goes off, we'll hear it. And I've got a rem over here in the floor, so we'll hear that as well. There's one on the other side as well of the uh, engine room. And there's the engine. Look at that. It's mental. It's massive. And just over here, I've got... Okay. Well, that's good. That's the proximity sensor, which you can see is attached here to uh, the engine, which basically turns the whole engine into a proximity sensor. We're going to see what we can find out tonight. I'm just going to point this young lady out to you here, who um, this apparently was uh, somebody Sean was having an affair with and tonight he's just broken up from her. Um, apparently he's not happy with the fact that she really doesn't take care of herself. Um, <clears throat> he's bought her some soap, soap. Uh, he's thrown water on her. She just hasn't cleaned herself. <clears throat> so he's, he's, tonight he's dumped her. So Leo a medium was picking up stuff in here and this is extremely tight. This is a, a mock-up of somebody working on digging out the coal and this is probably about the sort of height they'd have to work in and there's a gentleman here and ouch what the hell was that I think that was his fault I think he's just kicked me that son of a bitch just booted me in the shin Wait till the camera goes off and there's no witnesses. So let, let you know what? Before we ask the proximity sensor to be interfered with, let me show you what else we've got. It's amazing. Oh, it, no way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for acknowledging to me that you are here. If you can follow me and join me throughout this investigation, I'd be much appreciative. I don't know who this is or who we're dealing with, but you know what? 
I like it when that happens. I love it. So just up here, we've got another REM pod by these stairs. Now these stairs, I'll just move this out of the way, lead into here. Now there's, a, there's another uh, model there, another dummy. And this gives you a bird's eye view of the whole engine room. And there's a levers here that controlled the big mine that was up there. So this, this was like the control center of it all. So that's the brake. And then the throttle to make it go faster. And the lever for forward, for move this chair forward and reverse. And obviously, of course, a telephone. Now I'll tell you what, it wouldn't half make for a fantastic investigation if something rang that telephone. Let's see if we can get it to interact here. Okay, if you're here and you're with me, please make a noise. That was you that set that proximity sensor off. Please communicate with me. If we hear anything in here, we'll definitely hear it because there's echoes everywhere. Hello? Copy this voice or whistle like I do. Just gonna go down these steps. Are you here? Are you a spirit that is with me now? Please come forward. Communicate with me. I'm in the back corner of this room. This is your opportunity now to communicate with me. Did somebody just knock on something or make a noise here? Could you do it again? And again, hard to know exactly where that was. I'm not entirely certain. I hope we heard that. That was over there. And the reason I'm whispering is I'm shitting my pants. I heard that. That was amazing. Do that again for me, please. I heard that and it was amazing. Make that noise again. Or copy my voice. <whistles> Maybe that was something before. I'm trying to set the proximity sensor off. Is that you trying to move? this machine and set this device off that we've got attached to it.
Set that off. Go on, walk towards it. Or tap on the machine, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Can you do that? Wow. Thank you. Are you touching this machine? Are you able to walk towards it again and light it off for me? Set it off. The ceiling's uh, You can just see the age of this place. I mean, look at the ceiling. It's one of those places that, you know, we, we thrive for. This is what we, we really enjoy getting into. And if it's, uh, you know, got something going on, then it's, it's even... Oop, me. If it's got something going on, then obviously it's even better. But we just, uh, until you get into it, you don't know. But it's... Uh, it's a real health and safety thing going on here. I'm actually not feeling much in this room. So I think uh, I'm just going to try and move perhaps a little bit uh, closer to the, the door. That was me, that was me, it's all me, it's all me. Jesus, that wasn't me. Christ almighty, what was that? That wasn't me. I don't know what the hell. I don't know what the hell that was then. But... No? Not gonna do it. Oh yeah, thanks man, that was amazing. Thank you so so much. No way. Did you die here? Please set this meter off if you died here. Do you just come back because you like it? Or did you die down in the mine? response to my questions but just going off you know you have to be banging this or tapping it or you know this whole thing whoa thank you thank you so so much what was that look thank you every time I'm not pointing at it it does it I'm just gonna walk away thank you so so much Please go towards it while I'm pointing at it. I promise you, I'll, you know, if you're a spirit and maybe I can't see you, I'm not going to capture you on camera. Just walk towards it and set it off. Please. Please do it. If you do it, I promise you I'll leave you in a few minutes, honestly. No? Now you watch. Point away. Boom. No way, no way, no way. I told you, where the hell is it? Let me see. I told you, didn't I? I told you that was going to happen. Point away. Boom. That is paranormal. That is what I do Ghost Dimension for. Proper, real, paranormal activity, evidence, exactly when it happens. Now, do you know what I always say to you as well? I, this is one of the things. You never get to see these spirits with your own eyes. It's very, very rare. Sometimes we capture them, sometimes we don't. But you know what? You point the camera away, bang. It's the people that say, you need a camera everywhere. They don't do it sometimes. When you point in the camera there, they won't want to interact. This is obviously a shy spirit. If I'm not pointing the camera at it, it does stuff. Paul, what an amazing night it's been at Astley Green Colliery Museum. Yeah. The level of activity here is one that's not to be presumed to be small or low. It's mental. Mm, There's yeah. lots of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. It's as I said earlier on with the roller coaster. <clears throat> it's picked up full steam. You know, it seems. And I tell you what, the weird thing is, it's dark. It's dark. As soon as it's got darker, it got creepier. Yeah, the, the spirit lifted. Out to play. Absolutely. <clears throat> and even though 
we say, you know, stuff's going on all around us all the time, day or night. It does seem to be at night. Yeah. It's more. And the reason for that, I think, is because if you are a spirit and you've of a human mind originally, mm. you know, we all, always creepy at night time. Yeah. So if you are a spirit, you think you're not going to be seen at night yeah. time. Yeah. So I'm going to do more at night. Yeah. And it sets us more on edge because obviously our main sense is limited. Yeah. So, you know, we're more hyped and more aware and, and our energy's sharper. Isn't waiting. Yeah. Uh, like and Jane's had fantastic investigations, you've had fantastic investigations yeah. all round. Yeah. It's been a fantastic night. It has. And uh, you know, this place is that big, it's 18 acres. <laughs> so it could do with a lot more investigation yeah, than yeah. what we've been able to give it in just yeah. one night. Yeah. But you know what? That's what Ghost Dimension is all about. <clears throat> Ghost yeah. Dimension Flying Solo has brought you this fantastic place and we've got many more locations to bring you. So, good night, God bless, and we'll see you soon.